Hello everyone, welcome back to my universe. My name is Belle here at Science Her Way and today I am live streaming. I've been live in, I don't even know how long it's been, but I'm live streaming. And today it's very special because today it marks the first start, well, I mean technically started yesterday I think for some people, but for me it started today, the Hour of Code event from code.org. So I'm gonna be live streaming hopefully for an hour on the different code apps. So today we're gonna to be doing the intro to lab app tutorial. Where is it? I have something else open, whoops. So this one right here. And I'm hoping that every day I can start streaming and I can go through all these. So tomorrow will be Minecraft Hour of Code and there's three different ones in here. So that day I might stream three times the same day. That way people who only want to see a certain part of Hour of Code can just watch that stream. And I'm only doing one today. If I feel like it, I may do another one, but we're doing that. So we'll be doing this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and that one. So we're gonna be doing a whole lot of these. So it should be a, you know, a couple days worth here of the Hour of Code event. Now, if any of you want to follow along with me, hello, Simba Collection, welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for sharing my universe. How are you doing? So if any of you want to join me in this Hour of Code, let me get the link real quick. You can go to code.org and let's see. Yeah, so it's literally just code.org and you hit enter in your browser and you, you can click the Hour of Code and that should be on their homepage here. So we go to their homepage, I'll show you real quick. So let's put it in chat here, code.org. There we go. Mm -hmm. And I thought YouTube would post it, but it hasn't, but that's okay. So yes, just code.org and you can go there and this is the homepage. Well, it's not the homepage, it's my dashboard. I was hoping to go to the homepage, but yeah, there's the courses and in there you should be able to see like an hour of code category. And in there you will find all of the hour of codes. So it's not that. So here we go. Hour of codes. So you can do. You can view more of the hour of code tutorials, and that's where I am, I believe. Just go in there and check. Yeah. So this is where I am. So we're gonna be doing this one today. Like I said, you guys can join along and go to the website code.org. So that's code.org, and do along with me, or you can just sit back and watch. But feel free to ask questions, and we will be learning along together. Since I haven't done code in a while, but I have done a little bit recently. And the program language is going to be Blockly, or not Blockly, Block E, <laughs> and JavaScript. Now, Blockly is basically just JavaScript, but it's drag and drop code. So it's still kind of JavaScript, it just looks different. Yeah, I'm really excited. And a lot of people have already started doing our code since yesterday, like I said. Since it did kind of start yesterday, the Twitter account said it started yesterday, but they even said a few hours and everyone else will be caught up. So I'm guessing in places where it was already Monday, that's when it started for them. But when I saw it, it wasn't even Monday for me, it was Sunday. So yeah, I think everything's set up and I'm liking, have any of you noticed, I got a new overlay from player.me. You can go on there and use some template templates yeah, they have some pre-made overlays that you can customize and change things around. You can also make your own in there. So I made that. And for those who were here at the beginning, you will see. But yeah, I'm really excited that I have some proper overlays now. I hadn't, I've never had a starting suit overlay. So I'm excited. I have a new BRB one, which I may use today, but we'll see. All right, so is everyone ready? I do want to wait just maybe three minutes. Yeah, three minutes to so people can go check their emails and be like, oh, this person's live. So yeah, but how's everyone doing today? You all excited for the hour of code? Now it may not take me an hour, so I'll hope the stream can go to an hour, but it may not take me an hour, so. I can't pay any promises though. Oh, one of the things didn't go off, okay. 
I have no idea how to set it up, so. <laughs> one thing was supposed to go up, since Simple, you did host me, there was supposed to be like a notification that would say, like it would pop on screen, but I thought I set it up, but apparently not, but it's fine. One more minute and then we will get started with this. Let's see, it's been streaming for 11 minutes now, so yeah. And can everyone hear me okay? Can you, can you hear me okay? Am I not laggy on screen? Can you see like I'm flexing my fingers? Is it not laggy? Doesn't look laggy. Which is good, actually it looks like it's running really smoothly. Oh, my CPU usage is low, that's really nice, okay. So it looks like the stream is, move is running smoothly, that's good. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. And uh, where's it, okay, and keep chat open. Oh, cool, awesome. Yeah, I didn't know if it popped up on screen, but all right. So we're going to go ahead and start the tutorial. So in this one, we're going to be creating our own app in JavaScript. So there's a video. Now, I don't have my sound on. So if those of you who want to watch the video, you can go ahead and go to the website, code.org, and go here and watch the video yourselves. So I am going to watch it, but I'm not going to play the sound. And I'm going to actually mute my mic because I don't have my headphones plugged into this computer. So yeah, let me mute my mic so you guys don't hear the video at the same time. All right, so that was the video. Again, you'll look at 
look at it at code.org and go to the app lab tutorial in the hour of code and this looks really simple and I'm actually really excited to do this I get to create my own app and I do eventually want to make my own game so this will definitely help me now it's not a mobile game but either way also I do want to point out that this is not sponsored by code.org in any way I just decided that it would be a good idea to live stream the hour of code events since this is the week of the hour of code and I do want to get back into programming and I thought this was a really good way to do it and also show people who have never cut before or have and have done it in ages like I have and maybe want to get into it. So yeah, just it's not sponsored. <laughs> so there we go. So I'm going to, I'm going to explain uh, what's happening since maybe those of you who have not watched the video or who weren't there with, with me watching the video. Hey, Kay Sheridan, how are you? It's been a long time. Thank you so much for the follow. I very much appreciate it. Welcome. I did the follower thing pop? No, oh well. <laughs> yeah, how are you doing? Welcome to the Hour of Code live stream from code.org. Well, the Hour of Code lessons are from code.org. <laughs> yeah, how are you doing? This looks really interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and explain what's going on here. Also, uh, this is my mannequin or yeah, mannequin, and she is wearing the I'm Powered by Knowledge shirt. For anyone who was wondering what this thing was behind me, it's my mannequin wearing my shirt. Uh, this is possibly on, on Amazon. It may have got taken down from no sales in a while, but we'll see. So, what we're doing in the App Lab is we're gonna be coding our own app in here, like the App Lab, you know, the name implies. So, as I said earlier, we're gonna be using the Blockly, it's a Blockly or Blocky? I think it's Blocky, because another program I did was Block Lee. So this is the Block E. Okay. So we're using the Block E programming language, which is just basically JavaScript, but instead we drag and drop the code we want to use. But we can switch over and show text. So we can still drag and drop things, but it will change it to the text. So the people who are doing this may be using the block mode but you're still technically learning JavaScript underneath this. So JavaScript is a really user-friendly language. It's, I've heard, a really easy for people to get into it when you're just starting out. It's the language you would learn first, like you wouldn't learn, you can, but it's recommended that you do JavaScript first because it's easier when you're a beginner and you've never done code before to get into it. So that's why. So that's really cool. So I'm doing great, thank you. I'm really excited for this. We're gonna be making our own app today. It's gonna to be, this should only take an hour long, so we're gonna make our own app today. Not sure what yet, but we're gonna go through this and see what we can make. And we're gonna be learning together, so if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And the website I'm doing this on is code.org. After all, they are hosting the Hour of Code event, and it is until the 14th or 15th of December, I believe. So it's, I think, generally, it's like a week long. So we have a goal here. So the goal is to make the screen green. And it says how. Drag in a set property block, use the drop downs to set the screen's background color to green, then hit run. And of course there's a little help here. So I actually already did this. So this is the code they're talking about right here. So we have a set property, here's screen one. We only have screen one, background color. Now we have other things, but right now we're only doing background color and here we have some default ones, but we can also change it to a custom color, or we can just click here and do green. Now, of course, if we were to do it in text, you know, you wouldn't necessarily see the drop downs. You actually have to type it in yourself. So, for example, I can change green to red, and you can see as I was typing, it was doing, yeah. So set property and tells you, you know, examples. It'll help you to set red. And if I hit run screen is red but that's not what we wanted see did the screen turn green if so hit finish if not hit reset change your code and hit run again and technically it didn't because i put red so we're gonna hit reset and i'm gonna change it to green and this works either in blocks or text i like text a little bit but sometimes it's easier for me to do blockly so just now i've been coding in a little bit so our image should look just like this one up here that makes sense. I know, right? Programming is cool. I did it back in 2015. I got a little burnt out and 
I could finish the code, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily understand what it was. So I kind of stopped coding for pretty much two years. So but I got back into it a little bit this year. With, uh, I did a video on Ozobot. You can go check that out on my YouTube channel. That is also another programming thing. But instead of programming on the web, you can program on the web, but it also controls the robot in real life. It was really cool. So, yeah. Are you finished with App Lab? You're in control. It's up to you. Check your work and decide when you're done. So, yeah. So at the moment, we're just going to do this tutorial. I will probably make an app and test it out, but yeah. And like I said, this should only take an hour, that's why it's called uh, Hour of Code, so. Mm -hmm. Alright, so the goal here is to make the text bigger and blue. I was almost going to say bigger and bluer, but that's not how you say it. So how is the, you'll need two lines of code. Give label one a font size of 80 and text color of blue. So again, this is set property. Now I don't know if we'll get other controls because right now we only have UI controls, but maybe later we'll get more. And for those who don't know, UI stands for user interface and you may not know what UI stands for, but you definitely know what it looks like. Technically, if you look at it, this stuff up here is the UI user interface, is the visual display of how something looks. So when you open your phone or your tablet or your DS, it has an interface. Maybe it looks really old from like the, like 2002. Maybe it looks really polished. Maybe it looks really 3D or flat. That's all part of the UI. So this is why it's under UI controls. So we have label one and we want to set the, let's see, label one. And here we want to go to text, and we want to change the text to, no wait, oh my bad, it's font size. We want to change the font size to 80. Now, of course you can still type while using the blocks here, but you can also do the same thing in text. And every now and then I like to do the text, so I can understand what it looks like if I were to actually do JavaScript in another platform that may not have the blocks. So, and you know, in the blocks, it's just drag and drop and there's drop down menus. But when you go to the text here, set property is like a command. And in the parentheses, not parentheses, the, what are those things? Yeah, parentheses. Is it parentheses? I think it's parentheses. <laughs> These things, okay. You know, the nine and zero when you hit, hold your shift key. The inside the parentheses is kind of like the, I'm not sure I want to use this word because that's not necessarily it. That's something later. I don't want to use it to confuse people. So I was going to say variables because technically you do change this, right? Because here we have label one, then you have font size and you have 80. These are all things that you change. And by having a comma, you're telling it, okay, this is what I want you to change, comma. Then I want you to go here and change the font size and change it, you know, put the comma and change it to 80. Now, I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, when you put the, I can't remember if this is either Python or JavaScript, it's probably JavaScript. When you have the quotation marks around it, that makes it a string and the string holds information. It's either that or it's a variable. I'm trying to remember here. Yep, trying to remember, so bear with me. And of course at the end is a semicolon, and a semicolon basically tells it to, tells the, well, the line of code that that's the end. So when the computer reads it, it reads it, you know, set property label one, and the font size to 80. So, and that's, you, if you don't have a semicolon there, it's not gonna know, it's gonna just continue to read on. It's gonna be like, well, what's going on here? So by having a semicolon, you're telling it, hey, this is the end of the line and do this function. So whenever you're writing code, you always wanna make sure when you have the, when you're done with that line of code for that function or whatever it is, you put a semicolon there. So we're gonna change the font size to 80 and we're gonna do set property again, I thought. Yeah, set property label one, and we're gonna change the text color. Oh, I'm already on text color. Ha! <laughs> and we're gonna change it to blue. I don't know why. Okay, we're just gonna type it. And now we hit run. We should get the exact same thing. 
and we have. And the numbers right here is the number, the line of codes you have. Yep, are you finished? Yep. Hit continue, and that should be that done. All right, now we're getting into some more, not necessarily complex, but intricate stuff. So make the buttons red and blue, then change the text in the large orange label. All right, so remember, you can hover over elements to see their ID. Set the background color of the buttons to red and blue. Set the text property of the label to anything you want, like, welcome to my app. So here we have the ID. This is label one, this is button one, this is button two. So when we do set properties, we do want label one. And this is text. Yeah, this should be text. And I'm guessing here we can say whatever we want. So welcome to my app. And that should be it. Then next, <clears throat> sorry. Oh, values, not variables, values. That's what I meant to say for these right here. These are the values. So here we're going to go to button one. We're not changing the text, we're actually changing why drop down menus, why? Okay, well the drop down menus are messing up for some reason, but it's fine. And we want to do background color, background color. We want to change that to red and it's already red, so we're gonna leave it. And this is really easy. Anyone of uh, pretty much any age can go on code.org and learn some programming. The earliest I've seen for some of these is anyone who's in grades number two. And they have some all the way highest to grade nine and plus. So literally everyone can do this. Even people who are out of school could do this too. It's a great introduction. I actually did the hour code last year. I just didn't stream it. <laughs> So we need background color again, and we're changing this to blue. Well, we'll have to type it again. And I just caught myself, we didn't change label one, because we need to change it to button two. And I'll show you what it looks like in text right here. So it looks like this, and remember the semicolons, because if I didn't have semicolons, it would read the whole thing, and it probably wouldn't do the correct thing. After all, we only want to change this one thing, and we then want to stop doing that and then do a whole new thing. That's why semicolons are important. And then if we hit run, that should be it. Yep, looks like it. All right, so there is a video, and I'm not gonna play the video on the stream, so I'm going to mute my mic and if you want to watch the video, go to code.org and go to the app lab and watch the video. And any of you watching can follow along with me and ask questions. That's both welcome and it'd be awesome if y'all followed along. So yeah, let me meet my mic real quick. Thank you, Kay. I just saw before the video started playing anything, so thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Now back to the video. <laughs>
All right, so we have a new block. I'm going to explain what the video said since I didn't play the video in the stream. I don't want to get taken out for copyright. That's why I'm not doing that. <laughs> so while this is loading, we have a new block. It is called on event. And the on event blocks basically say you can read like a sentence, just like she said. You guys couldn't tell that though. <laughs> so you read it, you know, on the event that this happens, do this basically so on the event this button this big button which is the id of this so on the event big button is clicked do whatever the function is so right here the property is set to blue for the screen right here so we hit run right now it's green but we're supposed to make this interactive that's what these events are for so the events are supposed to make it interactive so when a person will click this button on the event that happens, something else will happen. That's the whole point of this. So we're gonna take the on event block right here, take the set property. Now this part was already done for us. I'm not sure why, but it was. Also, I forgot to read this part. <laughs> I got ahead of myself sometimes, sorry about that. The screen will start out blue. Add code so it turns green, click the greenify button. Add a code inside the on event that sets the screen's background color to green. So just like this GIF right here. Now they said that you cannot, or you really shouldn't. I'm not sure if it'll, it'll cause problem. Probably will though. It says do not add on event blocks inside of each other. You can add them underneath each other or on top, just not inside of each other. So keep that in mind. And where do I go to just right to clear? Yeah. Okay. I'm used to like the little trash can where you drag the code to the trash can. <laughs> All right, so we want to change the ID, which is a big button. And if you scroll over it, you can tell that, hey, this is big button because the ID says it right there. Can you guys see that? Can you see it says big button? Well, believe me, it says big button. So after that, we want to say that once it is clicked, well, no, it already says it's clicked. We want to change the oh yeah we'll change the background color. We want to change that to green. <laughs> okay, so I probably shouldn't capitalize that. It probably won't read if it's capitalized. So that's now changed to green. And then another thing we can do here we can change the big button to we can change the text of it where's the text block did i do it wrong oh i think i see what i did wrong hang on it's probably not screen one no it's not it's a big button i'm not seeing it. this is why i'm confused but i may maybe it's not here See, that's text color, but I want to text align image. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. Maybe it has to be outside, which may be the case. I'm looking for the text thing, but worst case scenario, I just type it in myself. Text. And we're going to say and I'm going to put it back in here. So we're going to hit run. And once I click this, yep, it worked. There we go. So it probably will work if I were to move it, for example. And we're going to hit reset, hit run. Oh, no, it doesn't. And let me tell you why it doesn't. So we went, when we hit run, it reads the code from top to bottom, right? So it says that, okay, I want, it's, it reads saying that, okay, she wants the screen to be blue. Got that done. On the event this happens, so then it's just waiting for the user interaction. But after it reads that, it notices that, hey, I want to change the text to yay. But technically I want that to happen when the button is pressed. That's why you want it inside the on event because it happens afterwards. 
and you want it after the change of the color. Now, because they're so close together, I don't think that if I were to put the this block right here on top of this one, it would matter too much. But just to be safe, you do want the text appearing, well, changing after the color changes. So you want to put your text underneath. So that's why it didn't work. You put yay first before I even clicked it. See? So, I'm gonna make sure of that. And let me show you the text again. So right here, so you see on event, you see the same values and then you see function. And function is, well, let me see, how do you explain function? Mm, I guess function, I could explain it, is a function is the, that's the interactiveness. And the function says that when this happens, do this. And don't get it confused with the if or else statements. That's something different. The if, and el the if or else statements is if this happens, do why if that doesn't help and if this if that doesn't happen do this or else instead which is z that's if and else yeah if and else statements but function though just says when this happens do this so they are different because if and else state if and else statements it's kind of like um well, let's see here. Let, I'm trying to find a good analogy. Mm. Okay, so let's talk about, so when you go to dinner, right? If you have, if you make dinner at home and you have leftovers, you need to put it up. So if your parents tell you to go put the food up. So if you go downstairs and the food is already put up, you would report back to mom and dad saying it's already put up, right? Else, if it's not put up, you would do what they told you to and put it up. That's how if and else statements work. So that's and that's usually how it works. And the function is more so, it is kind of like if and else statements, except you're not writing an else part. You're just saying, hey, when this happens, do this. And if and else is more so for, it kind of makes the computer autonomous it makes the computer think if this happens then I'll do this the function though you know this is supposed to happen and you know that's how it's gonna work so that's more so for functions is that if you know it's gonna happen you know you wanted to do this specific function you would use the function part does that make sense <laughs> and right here this is a bracket or oh, this is a curly bracket so in the curly brackets this is the function so you're telling it this is the function I want you to do and just like you have to, whenever you start a parenthesis, you have to end it with the other parentheses. Same thing for the curly, oh, not brackets, braces. Curly braces? I forget what it's called sometimes. You want to do the same thing, basically. If you start, if you have a starting parenthesis, you have to end it with the parentheses as well. If you start it with the curly braces, you have to end it with the curly braces as well. As you can see, when I clicked on it, it showed me where the other one is. That's the ending one. That means that everything inside the curly braces, I want that to get done when the, when the on event thing happens. So when the on event code runs, I want everything in the curly braces to be run. That's how it works. So, and then I'm not sure what, oh right, this is also the same thing, except that's just the, yeah, so the curly braces is what I want to happen, and the parentheses right here is just wrap. It's just wrapping up the whole code basically. It just holds the whole code, saying that when the computer runs this, run everything in this parentheses right here. And that's why it's after this curly brace, because everything in the curly brace is the functions we want to happen on the event. And the on event in the parentheses is the you know I want you to change this when this happens, and here's the function. Does that make sense as well? <laughs> I hope so. So now if we hit run, and it works. So there we go. There we go. Okay, Kay, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. Yeah. All right, so now that that's done, we're gonna go ahead and go to the next lesson. The 
I've been streaming for 41 minutes. I know this is only taking an hour, but I'm stopping to explain everything, so this may take a little over an hour. But there's a total of 15 puzzles, so we're not doing too bad. All right, so. Help finish this flashlight app. Is my mic on? Yeah, okay. Help finish this flashlight app. The on button already turns the screen right, white. Run the app and try it out. Then write code so the off button makes the screen black again. How? Add code inside the empty on event that sets the background color of the screen to black and text color of the label to white. So I'm going to scroll down here. So you want to go to the off button and say background color and we want to say black. So I'm just going to type black. Then after that, we're going to change the text to white. Otherwise the text will just blend in. This is the off button. We want to change the text color and we want to change it to white. There we go. So we hit run and we hit on. This works. So we hit off. The Nope, I did it wrong. What did I do wrong? Oh, wait. Oh, I see what I did. I said set property off button. That's, oh, I changed the off button's color. <laughs> I changed the wrong thing. Technically, I want to change the screen to black. I want to change the, this is label two, I'm guessing. Let's hit reset. On button. Yeah, I'm gonna say this is label, nope. Let's see here. Screen one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, it shouldn't be label one. Let's try label one, but I'm pretty sure it's not label one. Oh no, yeah, it is label one, you know why? Label one is this stuff. Yep, label one, this is the, okay. I was still thinking about this. I was caught on the whole, I changed the button to black. No, no, no. The whole goal is to change this right here. So now we hit run, we hit on, hit off. Now it works properly. What I did was I set the property instead of screen one and label one, I set it to, I set both of them to the switches. So when I hit the off switch, it changed the switch to the text to be white and the background of it to be black, which is actually not what I was going for. So since I changed the first one, which is screen one, which is the background color to black. So instead of changing the button to black, I changed the screen to black, that's screen one. And label one is the text one, technically. Not sure why it's label, but that is what it is. So that's where I got confused. I was like, what is label one? I thought label one was the on text, but it's not. So that's where I got confused. Yep, and now it works. So next. Oh, another video again. So I'm going to mute my mic here.
All right, so now we can add our own images and sounds. And this seems very easy. Now what you can do is you can add your own images or pick from a selection of icons. You can also add your own sounds or choose from the library. And that's very cool. So, let's see. This soundboard is almost done. We'll run it to see how it works. Then add an image, text, and sound to the last button. How? Oh, to the last button, okay. Add an on event to the program and set the ID to button four. Drag a place sound, which is this block right here, into the on event and choose a sound from the library. Add a set property outside your on event to change the button's image. Oh, image property. Choose an image using the third dropdown. Add one more set property to change the button's text. Okay. Let's do the set property first. And we're gonna do them all up here. Image, and we're going to go find one, choose, and icons. You can also search for one. Oh, they have a lot in here, they have a lot. Now it's supposed to be a duck, but I'm not seeing a picture for the duck. So do they have any animal icons? No. It'd be kind of interesting if they actually update this to where you could choose emojis. Oh, there's a lot. There's a lot more than I was. Okay. So there's a lot more than I thought. There's a lot more than it shows you, it definitely looks like. Unless I just didn't see it. Animal. Nope. I supposed to go find an image of a duck? Because I'm pretty sure I don't have an image of a duck. Uh. Monkey, tiger, horse. Mm, I guess I'll just choose one off my computer then. I don't have a duck, but that's not the point right now. Do I, do I have at least a bird? A br oh. I'm totally adding this. It's not a duck, but I'm totally adding, adding this. Hit. Y'all know what this is? You can read it. It's a pork from Star Wars. I love these things. My mom thinks they're creepy, but I love these things. Oh, it was already uploaded. My bad. Choose. So we're choosing a porg <laughs> because I love porgs. So. I keep seeing something pop up over here. Oh, you know, if I probably just go to here and type duck.jpg it'll probably work but for now we're sticking with porg <laughs> wouldn't that be so cool to like have a porg in the app oh that'd be awesome okay we're gonna do a sorry guys um on event we're gonna change the id to button four when it is clicked we want to play a sound Now, if I go to animals, there should definitely be a duck. I'm hoping so. There is a duck. Wait, the dinosaur though. Let me find a different bird sound. I know it's saying to do a duck, but I want to be a rebel and do something else. I need a perfect porg noise. Penguin. Well, they're closely related, so we'll do a penguin. This is gonna be funny. Uh, hit run. Look, it's a porg! Oh, wait, reset. I forgot to do something. 
Uh, I forgot to do something. Uh, need to set the property. We're doing button four and we're changing the text. And we're changing the text to four. <coughs> Yes. Close enough to a porg. <laughs> I love porgs and I love Star Wars. Hello, metal man. I see Jamo. I'm so sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, but yeah, I do plan on making an app later after going through this tutorial in the R code. I'm not exactly sure what to make for an app. I don't know, maybe it'll be a plants app or a voxel app, I'm not sure, but it'll be an app of some sorts. Now I may do a separate live stream right after this because I want this to be a place on my YouTube channel to where people who are doing the R code week, and it is a week I believe, they can come and watch the stream and I want them to be able to just watch the stream of the tutorial instead of later going on, you know, watching the whole stream and watching me do an app. So I'd rather it be separate, you know? So if I do end up doing an app after the tutorial, I'll stop the stream and start it back up and change the title of the stream. And, oh, that's not supposed to still be running. Why is that still running? Why? There we go. For some reason that was still running, I meant to turn that off. What? But yeah, so it'll, so yeah, I want to separate the streams that way. I'm so happy about this. So we have the monkey button, we have the tiger button, the horse button, and then of course, it, this isn't the exact sound of the porg, but they are, they're based off of puffins. And I'm, I'm, I think, I'm not 100% sure, puffins may, might be related to, pe to penguins in some way. Not sure, but. This is as close as I'll get to a pork noise, and I have a picture, and I'm happy about this, so, yeah. No, you can't eat a pork. I don't, well, I mean, if you, if you tried, maybe, I don't know. The porks are from Star Wars, by the way, the newest movie coming out, Star Wars The Last Jedi. So, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Oh, this is a video? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I don't think you can eat a pork. If you try hard enough, maybe. But I wouldn't eat a pork, personally. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to mute my mic and watch the video, video for this. But you all at home can watch along with me. If you go to code.org, go to the App Lab tutorial, and you can go to, it's uh, number 10 right here, lesson 10, which is the design mode, which is a video. I'm not going to play it on stream, so that's why I'm muting my mic. I wouldn't have to, but I don't have headphones plugged in, so it'll play out loud and my mic will catch it, so I'm gonna mute my mic. I see what you did there, nice pun. <laughs>
All right, so this is gonna be really cool. So this is where we get to do the design part of our app. So this is where we add the buttons, we add the codes, the images. So I'm really excited for this part. Um, that's gonna be really cool. And we can do different screens and stuff. Now, Laird, you might have saw on the street stream, she, uh, she was saying something about you know, coding a button, different screens. So what she was saying was that later we're gonna be working on one project to basically test to design our own screen, make a button, and then code it so that when we click a button, it changes the screen. And that's gonna be really cool. And this looks like it's gonna be super easy. So let's go ahead. So the goal is to add a second button to the screen that says right, with an ID of right button. And she was also explaining how you can change the ID of something. When you first add something, it's gonna have a very generic ID, like ID and ID. Button one, button two, or image three, image four. So she says that you want to change it something more meaningful so that you remember it. So we want to change the ID instead of like button four to right button so we'll, so we will remember it. So, and of course we can change from design to code just like this. But here we're actually just gonna be doing the design part. So here you're gonna go to your toolbox, you're gonna click and drag. We're gonna move it and we're just going to click and drag like that. There we go. So we're gonna change this ID to right button. Oops, I am so sorry. I almost knocked over my mannequin. I still need a name for her, but I don't have one yet. And we're gonna change the, no, we're not changing that. We're changing the text from button to right. And we're going to change the background color to red. Now I'm going to move this up a little so I can see what I'm doing better. And we're going to change this to red. Nice bright red. I'm going to move this back down till about there. And we need to change the text size. Where is the text? That's the text color. Font size. We need to change it to, what was it, 25? I think it was. We're gonna make it 30. It may not be 30, but we're gonna make it 30. Yeah. And that's it for that. That should be it. Yep, that's it. The, what is the code called? Uh, do you mean what I'm doing this on? Because what I'm doing this on is code.org. So the website is... So that's the website I'm doing it on. And this is part of the Hour of Code week. So you go there and you would go to, I believe it would be the course section and they have a section called Hour of Code. You would go there and there are several, several, several lessons on different types of hours of code. And I'm doing the App Lab or intro to App Lab. So this is the intro, this is the, the tutorial and that's why after the stream, I'll probably stop the stream and restart the stream and just make my own app, if I have time, of course. I started kind of late on the stream. So yeah, that's code.org. And the code or the language for the code is blocks or uh, blocky, but blocky is basically JavaScript under the hood. It's just that you can drag and drop it. So for example, if I go back over here, you see this drag and drop code, but I can also show the text and this is what the text looks like in the text form. So it's, it's the same code, it just looks different and you drag and drop it and you can just use the drop down menus to change different things instead of typing it yourself. But yeah, and code.org is a really great place to learn the, or getting, just starting into programming. I'm definitely gonna use it a lot more. I want to get back into programming. I did do it 
uh, back in 2015, but I got burnt out and stopped for pretty much two years. So I'm definitely going to be using this to get back into programming. Yeah, I know it looks clean. It's just that I'm still kind of remembering some things, but I like to show both. I understand both things and I can't explain it. It's just that for like the new stuff that I have never done before, I'm probably going to use the blocks part of it. But yeah. But yeah, if you do this yourself, you can use either te strictly text version or blocks version, or you can switch between two, it does matter. So this is all we're doing, and over here we're gonna hit run. So, and I don't think if I click it, if I click it, will it do anything? Oh, it does work. So choose your adventure, do you want to go left or right? So this is like a default kind of test code here. What we really want to do is add the button. Now, it doesn't say to code this in, but to add a challenge, I'm going to code this in. So, you know, it says right here to choose your adventure or your direction. And we went left and it does do something. When we go to right, it doesn't do anything. That's because there's no code saying, hey, when this happens, it, you know, when you click it, it doesn't do anything. That's really awesome, and thank you. Yeah, that's really cool. I definitely recommend code.org, and I have a few other websites as well. If you like the names of those, I can put them in chat and list them now. Uh, I also do have a Discord if you want to chat in Discord and talk about programming stuff or science stuff, game stuff, art stuff. Uh, if you have Discord, of course. But yeah, I do have some other websites where you can learn code and uh, get into it even i even have some stuff for uh android i don't have any apple products so i don't know what the apps i would suggest to you are on the apple products so be aware of that but yeah i can, I can definitely recommend some uh apps on mobile devices or browser devices if you would like but let me know if you don't have discord i am on twitter you can add me on twitter i can send you a message of links as well <laughs> but yeah, I do really recommend Code Org. If you've never done code before, you want to get into it and just learn, I do recommend this. It's a good start. So, and I will be doing actually, since the hour code is a week long, not a little longer, I'm going to be doing all the hour code lessons and I'm going to be live streaming every day at least one of the lessons. So you can come back tomorrow, the day after. I'm not doing weekends, I'm just doing Monday through Friday. And depending on what we, ha what we have left, I'll do it again. So yeah, and I hope to do more programming stuff in the future. Well, on here, I do have a video, well, two videos on my YouTube channel already that has programming stuff. Uh, I have a YouTube channel, by the way, that's all about science stuff. <laughs> so we need to change, we need it on event thing. No, I'm not trying to do that. Because I want to make it so that when the Oh, okay. Uh, I can give you the Discord invite. Wait, is my Discord invite on Mixer? It may not be. I'll give you the invite to my Discord server. We can chat in there. Uh, I'm always on Discord, except for like you know when I'm sleeping. But otherwise, pretty much all day I'm on there. Where is my invites? Now, I do need to organize my Discord. I haven't organized it yet. Where's the invites? Oh, here's the invites. Okay. Wrong thing. Here's the code to join my Discord server. And I, there should be a link on my Mixer page, but just in case there's the code to join. Uh, anyone's free to join. It is family friendly. So no swearing, no inappropriate stuff, family friendly only. So yeah. So what I'm gonna do now, since the right button doesn't do anything, we're gonna program it ourselves. I know it doesn't say to appear, but I wanna program it in as an extra challenge. So we're gonna change the right button and we want to do it to where when it is clicked, where is clicked? Well, oh, it's already on click. Derp. So when it is clicked, we want to set the screen. 
Now, depending on, come on, thanks. I'm trying to tell me what the, what it does. I know what it does. Huh. So I was gonna say when the right buttons click, I want to change the screen to the right screen, but there isn't a right screen. So we're going to make our own screen. I know this is doing more stuff than technically what is needed, but still new screen. Screen ID is, let's see, other ones are named, yeah. So we're gonna do right screen. And we're gonna leave it there, but we're also gonna add, not a button, I don't need a button, what do I need? That's not a button technically. And the text is in center, that's gonna bother me. So on the right screen, I want text input. Yeah, text input, okay. It's fine, and I believe I can just type somewhere. Let's see. Right, okay. So we're gonna say you went Right. Okay. Now we have to make the text bigger, or the font technically. Text color is should be white. Now you you won't be able to see it. That's 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 not even text. That's placeholder, isn't it? Alignment, center, font size. Let's do thirty. And the background color, whoops. <laughs> the background color, well, I wasn't trying to do red. But you know what? Actually, it should be red because the other one is, is red. So we're gonna leave it like that. Now, what's interesting is the text color is not changing. And I'm not sure why it's not changing, but it's fine. And technically, for all I know, the next lesson is all about doing this, and I could just be doing it already. So I'm gonna hit run and refresh, uh, maybe. That didn't work. Oh, I see, I did something wrong again. My bad. <laughs> yeah, warning, line six, set screen, which does not set, exist. Yeah, because we're on screen one. I need to put it to right screen. Oh, I need to reset. Now I hit run. There we go. So now I have it to where when you, when you click the right button, you are now brought to here. So for example, left button, I forgot to do that. When I hit run, left button, it says, you went left. And it really bothers me that the text is at the top, it really does. But I don't think the code's in here for me to change it. So, and it very well may not be. Yeah, but I'm really not sure why I can't change that. I wonder, let's go back to the code. See, the problem with that is I added the button in design and not in the code part. <laughs> I know, I should probably stick to the code. All right, hit run. We're technically finished. <laughs> I'm trying to get ahead of myself. I was trying to be smart. <laughs> Sorry. I was just like, well, I, you know, they did it in the video. I can definitely do it in the app. <laughs> Watch, in here it's gonna, it's gonna now teach me how to do the exact thing I was going to do. Watch. <laughs> Yep, yeah, definitely should have stuck to the code. Oh well, I was trying to get ahead of myself anyway. So create a new screen called right screen. Add text label that says you went right. I just tried to do that, didn't I? Ah, uh, all right. Well, since I did this, it should be really fast here since I know what I'm doing.
briefly. Right screen. Right. Why is this wrong? Right screen. It's is there already right? There's already right screen. This is why it's not working. Okay. Why would you have me create a new right screen? <laughs> no, that's not the thing. It won't let me do it because there's already a right screen, but it's telling me to create a new right screen. The work's already done. <laughs> why? See, now the question is how, how do I delete screens? Oh, here we go. No, I know it says screen, but that's because there was already a right screen created for me and I was trying to create a new right screen, but it was already done. That's why it wouldn't work. It kept getting red, if you noticed. That's why. <laughs> I will, mom, thanks. <laughs> yeah, that's what the problem was. Wait, is this because of my past code? I wonder if this is because of my past code. Well, technically there is screen one, I thought. No, there's not. Oh, well. Oh, no way. Where's the undo button? So I may have messed up. <laughs> okay, so let's see. So this is what happened. I was technically on the start screen. So I was on the start screen and I thought it had already opened up a screen for me to type in the new name. So instead, yeah, so instead I tried to renew the screen. I was like, oh, well, this isn't the screen I need, so I deleted it. That was my home screen though. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know if I can code an undo button though. Um, is there an undo button? <laughs> Technically I just deleted it, so there probably isn't an undo button. <laughs> I knew that was my home button. Let's go back to this one and hopefully it won't save. Oh no, it said save less than a minute ago. So it's probably saved. So the lesson's probably messed up now. Um, oh, wait, 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 can I be smart? Ah, no, <laughs> I deleted it. Ah, that's horrible. Um. Since I deleted the screen, I deleted it from the past lessons too. Ooh. Ooh, okay. So now what we have to do is fix the code. So now we have to make a new home screen with the original stuff that was on it. This is why I don't need to get ahead of myself. Oh goodness. Well, this is great. <laughs> it's fine though. This is, this is a good challenge. Well, you will persist. No, don't read it out loud to me. I know what I'm doing. Version history, that's not what I need either. Nope. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there isn't an undo button for what I just did. Uh, it would be nice if... Yeah, it would be nice if you couldn't delete the tutorial assets, you know, like if it's supposed to be the tutorial, you shouldn't be able to delete it, but at the same time, I shouldn't have tried to get ahead of myself, but live and you learn. <laughs> All right, let's do a new screen. We're gonna call this home, we'll, we'll leave it as screen one. See, there's screen one. So screen one, and I won't have the image that they had, sadly, but it's okay. So we're gonna leave the background color. This is just too funny to me. <laughs> now the code is technically still there for the buttons and stuff. It's just, it won't work because the button isn't there. Oh, your last code. <laughs> it's all right, we all make mistakes. This just happened to be a very important mistake I made. <laughs> All right, let's do another button. All right, 
so this is going to be left button, left button. No, because technically it's not, it's, it's not even running and that's not going to work. This is thing, is, see it says saved less than a minute ago. So it's already saved the fact that I've deleted my home screen. So that's not going to work sadly. <laughs> I appreciate you trying though. I really, is this the screen? Oh, this is the assets. Okay. Yeah, I really appreciate you trying, but there's no way out of this. <laughs> Oh, that's so bad. Okay. So there's that. Uh, text is left. Background color. This was like a yellow color. Just like a... It's like a nice little yellow. Yeah, it was like that shade of yellow. And I need to change the font size. What was 30? 30. 30. And now for this, I change it to 30. So in a way, I'm kind of like reverse engineering. That's technically not what I'm doing. I'm just saying. There we go. And you change the text to right. I need a text input. And I remember what it says, so this won't be too, this won't be too bad. Background color. Like that. Oh, I need to make this left button. That needs to be right button. And then here, I think it said, where do you want to go? Left or right. doesn't work. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't work. Okay. Hmm. Wait, there's text input. That's not even what I'm supposed to do. It's not even supposed to be text input. That's the problem. It's not text input. It's text area. That's what it probably is. Because remember last time I had the problem where it says you went right and it wasn't doing anything. Text input. That's probably where the player is supposed to put their own text in there, not me. You watch. That's exactly what it's gonna mean. That's a little too... There we go. Text. Where do you want to go? Yeah, see, the other one was a placeholder. Like, have you ever gone to a website and a placeholder in there will be like, uh, your name at domain.com when you like make an account? Same thing, basically. That's what the text input was. I needed text area. That's what I needed. Okay, so it's not 40. It's not 30. 25. Well, first of all, it was a little longer. And 
we're going to center it. Now, it doesn't it didn't look exactly like this, but it's close enough. Yep, there we go. All right. And they had an image, but I'm pretty sure I don't have that image. We will try though. Choose. They have icons, so we're gonna choose an icon from code.org. Do they have a sign by chance? Let me do, oh, let me type it in then. Sign, sign, map signs, that's exactly what they use. I recognize it. And then it was a certain color, icon color. It was out here. Okay, it wasn't that shade. There we go. <laughs> All right, so let's hit run. Hopefully the... it should not have done that. There should have been a home screen. It's automatically starting on that screen. I think because it's the first screen. Thank you so much for following me. Also, you, you never told me how to say your name correctly. I'm saying Metal Man IC Jammo, but I'm not sure I'm saying it correctly. Sorry if I'm not, but thank you so much for following me and welcome. Welcome to the team. Yeah, so the screen's in the wrong order. Can I align them? No. Oh, metal manic jam. Oh, that makes more sense. <laughs> metal manic jammo. Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, see what I need to do is change which screen is first, but I don't think I can. So this is just kind of forever messed up. <laughs> well, that's great. Mm. Yeah, I wish there was a way to fix this. I really don't think there is though. Can I import screen, import screen? Nope, I don't have the URL for it. That'd be interesting, but I don't. Mm. Oh, cool. Yeah, how do you make a screen first? This is a mess. Oh, okay. I will be doing that. Well, later in the future, I would also probably be doing some games. Uh, Steam related games, so like Space Engineers, Logic Bots, Portal, things like that. But that's later in the future. I mean, like, way later once I get a better computer, which is what the link about, I don't know if you saw it, but it was a link for the GoFundMe where people can uh, donate to me get a new computer so I can do more streams on, you know, some things like this, games and art, it'll run better because currently you can't do that. Yeah, so it's just kind of forever messed up. Cause I have no way of making it to where it starts on the home screen. Cause it won't allow me to shuffle the screens around. Like I would like it to, you know, start on screen one. Wait, set property, not set property. I have no way of making it. Mm. I have no way of making it to where it will start on that screen. Sorry. 
Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, this is a fine predicament I've got myself in. Yeah, there's literally no way for me to like drag the screens and I want to say to tell me, hey, start on this screen. Yeah, I may have to go to code or can say yes there's a bug you are allowed to it's not a bug but i would say make it so people can't delete the important assets in the program because i accidentally deleted my home screen for the code and i can't necessarily continue because of that so i understand what it's teaching me it just would have been nice if i could have also shown the stream but yeah i really i'm not seeing a way to move the screen around what i could do and this is not the ideal way of doing this is delete the left screen and delete the right screen and recreate them under screen one but like i said that's really not the ideal way of doing that yes it is i'm fixing this so if i so i can duplicate it What do you mean I know it's R2-D2? I, I took a picture with a R2-D2, but it wasn't the a f official R2-D2, if that's what you mean. And also, I named one of my robots R2-D2, if that's also what you're talking about. But yeah, I love Star Wars. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've duplicated the screens here, and basically, if I delete the other two screens, this will be the starting screen. And if I rename these screens, left screen and right screen, then technically it should work. I also need to fix the screen. The screen is messed up. I need to delete th delete that because technically it's text area. It was not even what I had put in there. You went, spell went right, right. Text color needs to be white. Background color needs to be red. It needs to be centered and needs to be 30. Oh, see now I can't move it, ah! Thank you so much for the host, Metal Manic Jammo. I remember this time. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, so now if I delete the other screens, okay, this could all go wrong as well, but this is, this is an attempt at fixing what I broke. And I have nothing else to lose here, so we're gonna go ahead and try it. I said yes. This is the right screen. I have to be careful not to delete my home screen. Again. All right, now let's go to screen two. We're changing that to left screen. Go to my right screen. And this is right screen. So now I hit run. That's fixed it, yes, okay. Now we have a home screen again. So if I hit right, we go right. If I hit left we go left oh thank god okay it's fixed so it is the way you align your screens i would it would be nice if there was a way to move your screens around instead of you know having to duplicate them at the bottom and you know change it so that would be my they moved up again well how'd that happen I rearranged them technically, but because I renamed them, it still went back up to the top. I don't get how that works. Because before I was starting out on the left screen, but since I had changed the position it was in, it worked, but now they're in the exact same position again. I don't understand this. <laughs> But because of that, I'm gonna rename, well no, I won't rename screen one because I'll mess up more and stuff. We're gonna leave it, we're just gonna go with it. I don't know how, I don't know how that works, but we're gonna leave it, we're gonna leave it. So we're gonna go on to the next thing because I finished it technically. 
Because what we were supposed to do was add a new screen called right screen. Did that. Okay. We're moving on. We're moving on from this part. <laughs> we're going to the next part. At least it's, I'm going to hit finish. We're moving on. So yeah, my tip for anyone who's following along or for anyone who says do this, be sure you know what you're deleting before you delete it. <laughs> Look at everything you're doing in the code editor before you delete it. <laughs> oh goodness. This icon means that this level is part of a larger product. Changes will be saved across these levels. Oh, you tell me that now. <laughs> You tell me that now. Yeah, changes will be saved across these levels, meaning that whatever I did in level one, well, technically two, technically two, is saved all the way up. I kind of figured that. Kind of figured that. <laughs> anyway. All right. The screen switches to right screen when the user clicks right, well, right button. In code mode, add a, add a new on event to your program for your right button. And I set screen block inside of it that switches screen to right screen. I already did this. Oh, okay. I, I see what happened here. So the last one, you were just adding the screen and not the code to make it so when you clicked the right button, it would go to the right screen. But technically, the code is already there. So... Yeah, the code's already there. <laughs> so we're moving along. <laughs> That's kind of funny. All right, so now we have a video again. And as usual, I'm gonna mute my mic so I don't play the video on stream, but you can go to code.org and watch all the videos and do this on yourself or watch along and code along with me. Okay, so, wow, it's dark in here. I just, I just looked at that. Okay, so, apparently, oh, we're done already. It's kind of sad. So, in the video, it was saying that this is, I've only scratched the surface of the app. If you want the full app, you go to code.org slash app lab. That has more advanced user, app, user interactions, more screen elements, and even a database. Is it a database or database? You let me know in the comments. I'll have to run a poll on Twitter and say, is it data or data? Anyway, so yeah, so you can actually make a full-fledged app with that thing. You can also share your app. So technically I can share it right now and that doesn't do anything, too, doesn't do too much, but I can share it and you can put your phone number in there and it will send you a direct link to your app. Now I won't be doing that because I actually don't have a phone. So that way it's actually inconvenient for me. I have a tablet, but not a phone. So you can actually either publish it to the public library of code.org 
or you can share a link on Twitter and Facebook. So that's nice for people who don't have phones. So let's look at the last thing here. And let's see, goal. Build your own app by extending this project, then share it with someone. How? Decide what type of app you're interested in building, then go build it by adding more screens, buttons, text, sound, and user interactions to your app. There's a few more blocks in the toolbox that you can experiment with as well. Uh, once you're done, click share to send it to yourself or a friend. So at the moment, I'm not sure what the max capabilities are of this intro app lab. This isn't the full one, remember that. But you can make personality quizzes, greeting cards, or choose your own adventure ideas. And then you have, we have more properties. We have get properties, set screen, set property, stop sound, play sound on event. Those are UI controls. We have other controls, which do other things. We have variables and we have math. Okay. Yeah, so this is definitely interesting. So I am gonna create my own app. I'm really not sure what to do though. It probably will be STEAM related. And for those who don't know, STEAM is science, technology, engineering, art, and math. So yeah, I'll definitely be doing a STEAM app. I'm just not sure what kind. But this is going to be the end of the stream for the Intro to App Lab because, like I said earlier, I want there to be a playlist on my YouTube channel for people who are watching this to go and just strictly watch the live streams on the tutorial. If they want to watch me make my own stuff with the code I've learned, that's probably going to be a separate playlist and always a separate stream. After all, this is only supposed to be an hour. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do the stream after this. My throat is already hurting from all the talking I've been doing and it's only been an hour and 30, 39 minutes. So you can tell I don't talk much since it's only been like an hour and 39 minutes. <laughs> My throat's already hurting. So yeah, so I think, let's see. I probably will work on this a little bit off stream, but I will be in my Discord channel if any of you want to talk to me about the other resources I mentioned earlier, about the other coding websites for your browser and for your mobile devices, mostly Android since I don't know any programming stuff for iPhones or things like that. So I do have a Discord, I can give a code if any of you want, but there is a link in all of my YouTube video descriptions and on my mixer page there should be an invite link and if you miss the stream for example i'll be streaming every day at least on one of the error codes so if you do happen to miss a day it will be on my youtube channel for you to go back and watch and they're there to stay they won't get deleted they're on mixer too but they will get deleted after 14 days so that's why i recommend my youtube channel plus i'll be doing more coding stuff and more science stuff when it comes to games art and product reviews and other cool websites on my YouTube channel as well that I may not always stream. So definitely check that out as well, and I post it on Twitter too. So it, just summary, check out my YouTube, check out my Discord link, and my Twitter to stay up to date. And I will see you all later. Well, not later, tomorrow for the day two of the Hour of Code event. Tomorrow, let's actually go, I'm gonna go look at it, and let me tell you what we're, what we're gonna be doing tomorrow. So today was the app lab. This is really fun. I would definitely be doing more of this on my own time and we record it as well. Let's go to the course catalog. And again, the website is code.org and this is not sponsored. I just decided to do this on my own because I thought it would be really beneficial for people to watch and pretty awesome. So tomorrow we're gonna be doing the hour of code for Minecraft. Now the thing with Minecraft is there's actually three tutorials, well, three hour of codes. There is Hero's Journey, which is the newest one. There is Minecraft Designer and Minecraft Adventurer. We will be doing all three tomorrow, but those will be all different streams. Now, I am gonna start earlier in the day instead of at three o'clock. That way I have enough time to do all three of them. So tomorrow will be all Minecraft stuff. So yeah, that's gonna be it. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you all learned something and you're gonna try this out for yourselves. You can ask questions on these streams and you can follow along as well. The link is there and so the courses and it's all free. You don't have to have an account, but it helps saves your progress. And I do recommend making an account because like I said, it saves your progress and there's so much content here and so much to learn. And we're gonna be going through all of these lessons except for these last four right here. So from Play Lab all the way up to Minecraft, we are gonna be doing those. So I will see you all tomorrow for day two of Hour of Code stream.
Thank you everyone for joining. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.